A game that needs no introduction, having its name and style synonymous with the gaming industry. Cave Game. Bruh. Not just playing. Although it was called Cave Game at one point, this is Minecraft. A game with insane history, mystery, community controversies, and feelings. It's a game with infinite possibilities and genuinely unique gameplay, dominating the entire sandbox gaming industry at one point, and also dominating the YouTube gaming scene for years. A game that started off looking like this, and now looks like this. And a community that looked like this, to now this. Yeah. Minecraft has been around for well over a decade now, and over these years it has never truly died. But why is this? In this video, I'm going to cover Minecraft, its history, its future, and how Minecraft became immortal. And I'll learn your subscription by the end of the video, so enjoy. Alright, so once upon a time in 2009, there was this guy named Notch, and Notch wanted to create a shape, the cube. No, not the one from Fortnite. I'm talking about this light lime green one with dirt on the bottom. The first version of Minecraft was called Cave Game. Consisting of only grass and cobblestone, the game was released on May 13th of 2009, and just four days later, the first version of Terrain Generation was made. Then came multiplayer, more blocks, and girls. M Minecraft, you didn't tell me that this was a horror game. The in-dev stage started on December 23rd, 2009, and ended just two months later on February 23rd, 2010. This version of Minecraft... Yeah. Turn the game from a block sandbox game to a block survival game. But the next version of the game is when things started to get very interesting. Infdev was the version of the game that made the map so much bigger, almost infinite. The terrain generation started to take form and every world is now actually different, which is honestly still pretty cool technology. Infdev was succeeded by Alpha and the game looked like this back then. Then that version was succeeded by Beta, which looked like this. It all led up to the release 1.0. This was the first full version of Minecraft, available on the 18th of November 2011. Oh, and also before the first release, Minecraft is now available for you to play on the go with Minecraft Pocket Edition. As for Notch, since starting his Minecraft development company, Mojang, he's now no longer the lead designer for Minecraft. That role now belongs to this guy, Jeb. The company Mojang continued to improve Minecraft as a whole with new updates to the game, new employees to the company, and also being released on Xbox and PlayStation. However, on the 15th of September 2014, Microsoft announced a $2.5 billion deal to buy Mojang, along with the ownership of Minecraft as a whole. This was the first sign that Minecraft had a huge future ahead of it. I mean, $2.5 billion for a plot game is absurd. Minecraft being available and everything means that it could be enjoyed together, right? Actually, no. Well, not really. The game itself wasn't necessarily cross-platform, but in 2017, that changed with the Better Together update. Now the Pocket Editions and the Console Editions fused together to create Bedrock Edition that they dubbed Minecraft. As for the original version, well, that one's called Minecraft Java Edition now. And to play with friends on that version, not only do they have to be on PC, but you also have to create a server on your own PC, basically doxing yourself in the process. Okay, please just create a server the way it is on Bedrock. System at all. Why do I have to make my own server just to play with someone for a two week Minecraft game? It's so not fair. By the way, I hate Bedrock Edition. Okay, despite these updates, which will get mentioned later, that's basically the development history of Minecraft in a nutshell. I want to make it pretty short because in Minecraft's history, there's one massive mystery or character that everyone knows about and kept the game alive at one point. Hero Brian. This image. This image is so iconic. Everyone knows about this image and the character spawning from it. This is Hero Brian, Minecraft's biggest mystery slash creepypasta. It all starts with the wide eyes image spreading through the Minecraft forum all those years ago. And on August 24, 2010, a modified version of that story stemmed to Hero Brian, which is the default player character model Steve, but with wide eyes. And the story goes like this. I had recently spawned a new world in single player Minecraft. Everything was normal at first as I began chopping down trees and crafting a workbench. I noticed something move amongst the dense fog. I have a very slow computer, so I have to play with tiny render distance. I thought it was a cow, so I pursued it, hoping to grab some hides for armor. It wasn't a cow though. Looking back at me was another character with the default skin, but his eyes were empty. I saw no name pop up, and I double checked to make sure I was in multiplayer mode. He didn't stay long. He looked at me quickly and ran into the fog. I pursued out of curiosity, but he was gone. I continued on with the game, not sure what to think. As I expanded the world, I saw things that seemed out of place for the random mag generator to make. Two by two tunnels in the rock, small perfect pyramids made of sand in the ocean, and grooves of trees with all their leaves cut off. I would constantly think I saw the other player in the deep fog, but I never got a better look at him. I tried increasing my render distance so far whenever I thought I saw him, but to no avail. I saved the map and went onto forums to see if anyone else had found the pseudo player. There were none. I created my own topic telling of the man and asking anyone if they had a similar experience. The post was deleted within five minutes. I tried again, and the topic was deleted even faster. I received a PM from the username Hero Ryan, containing one word. 
Stop. When I went to look at Hero Brian's profile on the page 404, I received an email from another forum user. He claimed the mods can read the forum user messages, so we are safer using email. The emailer claimed that he had seen the mystery player too, and had a small directory of other users who had seen him as well. Their worlds were littered with obviously man made features as well, and described their mystery player to have no pupils. About a month passed until I heard from my informants again. Some of the people who had encountered the mystery man had looked into the name Hero Brian and found the name to be frequently used by a Swedish gamer. After some further information gathering, it was revealed to be the brother of Notch, the game's developer. I first I personally emailed Notch and asked him if he had a brother. It took him a while, but he emailed me back a very short message. I did, but he is no longer with us. And I haven't noticed any changes in the world other than my own. I was able to press print screen when I first saw him. Here's the only evidence I have of his existence. It's so fake, obviously, but this creepypasta sparked a flame in Minecraft's early community. A story, an image, and a mystery all sparked from Herobrine. Although sparking a lot of cringe and clickbait- <laughs> This is a huge part of Minecraft's history. Having a mystery being kept alive and being engraved into the video game creepypastas as a whole really contributes to Minecraft's early legacy. Oh yeah, and as for the whole Notch is dead brother claim, yeah that's fake. Notch don't even got a brother dog. It was a complete lie. But parts of the mystery still remain. Like how and why this image was created in the first place. And why did a younger version of me stay awake at night out of fear that a Minecraft man would kill me in my sleep? Bruh. Notch's controversy. Notch was always active on Twitter. That was a sort of his downfall. I mean, that was just brain rot. But Notch made some pretty horrible tweets. The port where Mojang themselves removed all references to Notch in the game entirely. Yeah, the creator of the game is no longer part of the game anymore. Imagine that. It's pretty sad to see someone go from creating one of the world's biggest and influential games to being known as that controversial Twitter guy. With all the money in the world, he still couldn't buy his own happiness. The downfall of Sky Does Minecraft. Around 2015, the popular YouTuber Sky Does Minecraft, or Adam, founded Sky Media, and this started his downfall with his employees being basically automatically unhappy with the person Adam was, manipulative, constant gaslighting, and mental torture. These allegations formed the first bad image of the YouTuber. This was followed by a controversy in 2016, where he basically protected a criminal, Jinma, who was sentenced to seven years in prison and said to be released in 2023. The crime? Inappropriate content and relations with minors. Yeah, and Adam knew this? How sick in the head do you have to be to protect a predator? Just so that way your company can edit your videos with no interruptions. And topping this controversy off, the abuse allegation. In 2013, when Adam's relationship with his fiance ended, Adam revealed a lot of personal information about the relationship that basically led to the community harassing her. It continues though. With his next relationship with Elisa, his ex-wife, Elisa allegedly dealt with abuse from Adam. Physical fights emerged and at one point in self-defense, she hit him to escape. To protect Adam's career, she didn't claim it was self-defense. Adam didn't bail her out of jail for the last five days. She missed her son's first Easter because of that. And then there's Elizabeth, another ex-girlfriend. There was more alleged physical and mental harm throughout the relationship as well, but Elizabeth claimed to basically be forced into having a child despite her not being ready to have one. Again, at the end, claimed he was very physically abusive. It's obvious he had mental issues before with this drama alert clip. I'm not perfect, man. Like, I've had a childhood that's crazy, okay? From, be from being ado adopted to my mother being on prescription pills my whole life to watching her overdose, to having to pull shit out of her <laughs> stomach when she stabs herself. Adam has now moved on to music. However, he was a huge part of Minecraft at one point. Had probably one of the worst downfalls the community has ever seen. The dream controversy. Alright, you probably already know the story behind this, but let me give you a small breakdown just in case you weren't aware. Back when Dream first started gaining a community, he started replying and basically privately DMing girls. These girls later went on to publish grooming allegations after his face reveal. Like with this tweet right here. However, to my knowledge, everything they say is almost all fake and was basically proven when Dream published this video in response to the allegations and like him or hate him he honestly didn't do that bad of a job addressing the allegations and disproving most of them one thing i do know don't form relationships with fans the way dream was doing i mean privately dming and snapping girls in a community with a younger age demographic yeah that's not gonna end well one thing is certain though minecraft will always have a community where something fishy is going on inside of it whether it be true or false honestly i can make a whole video about the minecraft community rabbit hole the future of Minecraft. Minecraft went from YouTubers like Dan's DM, Captain Sparkle, Stampy Longhead, and Popular MMOs to YouTubers like Tommy Init, Dream, George Not Found, Tubbo, and Filza. This is kind of a new generation of Minecraft creators, and it's pretty crazy to see a whole generation of YouTubers slowly move on to other things and get replaced by other YouTubers. But it's also pretty cool because Minecraft YouTube has been around for so long to the point where there's a new roster of people creating for it now. And since the game is here to stay and still one of the biggest games in the world, in a few years there could even be another generation of creators for this game. But it's not just the creators that have a future. Did I mention Minecraft still gets massive game changing updates to this very day? Sure, they might not be as huge and consistent as something to Fortnite, but even after 15 years, they still have so much they can do with the game. Like, finally adding bundles. 
or they can add a new dimension like the aether something a younger version of me very much wishes was real i will never forgive that fake video that i followed i mean they could also update the end dimension that thing is kind of boring now compared to the overworld and nether minecraft can basically add anything and make it a fun part of the gameplay experience like guns i would love to pull up to a village with an ak-47 and demolish absolutely every villager inside of it and then go home and play the new Minecraft update. Bruh. All jokes aside, Minecraft taking their time with updates to change the game little by little kind of ensures that it won't necessarily get scale as a whole, and it won't stop evolving. I think that's part of the beauty of Minecraft. Maybe you think the best version of the game was the classic version. Maybe you think it was before the 1.8 combat update. Or maybe you just can't stop playing the original Xbox 360 version because that version was the most fun for you. I mean, for me, my diamond house memory will always be funny in my heart. It's hilarious looking back at it. Minecraft is more of an experience that you can load up whenever you feel like you want to. It might not feel the same as before, but the point is, it's still there for you to enjoy and do something new in or maybe repeat something old in a new way you can build a house you can go mining you can make farms automatic sorting systems you can even speed run the game it has a vibe that i don't think any other game can encapsulate it can be the most calm and relaxing experience to the most chaotic and overwhelming experience it has a range of many different feelings and vibes and that's just in the single player mode you can do so much on servers or maybe just enjoying some time with your friends you might not have opened the game in a while because it doesn't interest you anymore or you might not like the community anymore and you choose not to play it because of that but after almost 15 years paired along with so many updates it's obvious that Minecraft will always be there, but something new for you to enjoy or something nostalgic for you to relive. In that sense, I like to think of Minecraft as immortal, because no matter what you can do in other games, playing as Peter Griffin in Fortnite Rock Band, that is still crazy to me. Minecraft will always have this energy and legacy behind it that no other game can truly capture. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, subscribe. It's still kind of a new channel, and it would be cool if you watched it grow. We were like at 100 the other day, and now we're approaching like 300, so. You know, um, that's cool.